Hey, U.S. History, we are live and ready to play Jeopardy about World War I. So exciting. Got to mute myself over here so they don't have to hear me. There we go. All right. It should be coming up now. For you guys, there's a little bit of a lag, I think. But welcome into Jeopardy. Who's Schmokey Dokey? Who's Schmokey Dokey? <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on just a second. I got to tell my student. I asked them if they could get into the video. And nobody said, I can't get into the video. Nobody said until after I'm already busy. And now they say, I see how it is. Okay. Hi, Anna. Hi, Elizabeth. How's it going? Good to see you. Alejandro. Alejandro, are you playing with us today? Let me know. And Bryce, are you playing today? Um, are, are, if you guys are all playing, you might be uh, Mr. Boyer's kiddos, then tell me who your teacher is as well. Tell me your name and who your teacher is. Hey, Mr. Boyer, welcome in. Okay, so we got Alejandro uh, on here. And is Mr. Boyer your teacher, Alejandro? I'm guessing so. So you're going to tell me your name and who your teacher is so I can put you on a team. Make sure and tell me your name and who your Stop teacher is. You Anna or, or Annie, are you playing? Let me know. Okay, Mr. Bo Elizabeth is Mr. Boyer. Good to see you, Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth played a little bit of this last year. We're gonna have to watch watch her. I think she's got the upper hand. <laughs> Amori, welcome in. We got Bryce for Mr. Boyer's team, and uh, I think I already got Amori. Jennifer. I'm going to put you on a team, guys, and then I'll tell you which team you're on. And Ananjan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And Annie. All right, guys, when you get in here, please let me know your name and who your teacher is so that I can get you on a team. And then I'll let you know who your team is. If you're my student, you're already on a team, so you don't have to worry about it. Anaya, mm -hmm. or no, Ayana, sorry, and Ariana, Ariana, you're Miss Barrow, all right, hi guys, once you get in here, please let me know your first name and who your teacher is so I can get you on a team, welcome in, welcome in, it's going to be a good one today. We got a lot of players. I like it. Uh, Sabrina is Mr. Boyers. Okay, I got you, Sabrina. And I'll tell you what team you're on in just a second. Daisy, I got you. And Emma. Hey, Josue, how's it going? Josue, who's, t uh, who's your teacher this year? Emma. And Rizwan. Cameron, welcome in, Cameron. Layla, I got you on my team already, so you're good. Brian is in Barrow, Miss Barrows. Jennifer. And Sandra and Josue. All right, sounds good. So these are the teams that I got so far. For team one, I have Mustafa, Samson, Amani, Carmen, Jonathan, Trinity S. For team two, I have Robert, Kayla, Eric, Anna, Michael, Benjamin. Team three, Daniela, Natalia, Nisa, Eddie, Trinity, Ella. 
Team four, Ruben, Raymond, Destiny, Layla, Steve, and Christian. Uh, let me put Israel. Okay, I got that. Um, let me put them on team. And then Prince, are you in Miss Barrows? Skyla and Zane is in Miss Strickland's. All right, when you get in here, let me know whose class you're in and your first name. Uh, so for team five, I have Alejandro, Lisbeth, Amori, Bryce, Jennifer, and Anna Anawan. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Number six, I have Annie, Ferrani, Jose, 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 sorry, Anaya, Sabrina, and Emma. Team seven, I have Ariana, Daisy, Rizwan, Cameron, Brian, and Jennifer. Team eight, I have Israel, Sandra, Josue, Prince, and Skyla. And team nine, starting with Miss Strickland's kids, is Zane. Who else do I have in Miss? Strickland's kids. Uh, Chuku, I, I don't know how to say your name. I don't want to butcher it. Uh, it looks cool, though. You'll have to stop by the library and let me know how to pronounce that. Uh, but I got you on a team. Uh, Jonathan, if you can't access on your laptop, that's fine. You can do it on your uh, phone. Tell Madison we missed her today. Sonia is Miss Strickland. I got you on a team. Hector got you on a team. Uh, Jennifer, that would be you on team five. That's you. I think. Uh, Jesus, I'm going to put you on team six. And we got Coach Baxter again. He gets to play twice in one day. He knows all the answers. All right. Mustafa, what class are you in? Are you in Miss Strickland? Joralis, I'm going to put you on Team 9. Jonathan. Do I have you on a team already, Jonathan? I think so. I don't know. Maybe. Let me know if I don't. Uh, Wesley, I got you on Team 9. And Samira, you are also on Team 9. Oh, we're going to have a great competition today, y'all. Oh, I got to let these teachers in. Sorry, guys. I was getting everybody on their team, and I forgot to let you in. But you're in now. Okay. All right. Yeah, Jonathan. Okay, you're good. And then Samson. Samson, who's your teacher? Andrew, I'm putting you on Team 9. Did you get Joralis? Yes, I got her. Okay. I'm the same one from your class. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think you put Mustafa on my team. That's not one of mine, but I mean, I guess it doesn't matter what team they're on. No, go ahead. Just don't leave East 2 at all. I am back. Sorry, the internet kicked me off, but I'm back. Oh, crazy times. Okay, I want to make sure that I got everybody on a team, and then we're going to get started right away so we don't waste any more time. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael, Eric, and... Joshua, I think I don't have you guys yet. Michael, Eric, Joshua. All right, so here's your teams, guys. Listen up. 
Team number one, Mustafa, Samson, Amani, Carmen, Jonathan, Trinity S. Team two, Robert, Kayla, Eric, Anna, Michael, Benjamin. Team three, Daniela, Natalia, Nisa, Eddie, Trinity, Ella. Team four, Ruben, Raymond, Destiny, Layla, Steve, Christian. Team five, Alejandro, Lisbeth, Amori, Bryce, Jennifer, and Anawan. Team six, Annie, Ferrani, uh, Jose, An Anaya, Sabrina, Emma, and Jesus. Team seven, Ariana, Daisy, Rizwan, Cameron, Brian, and Jennifer. Team eight, Israel, Sandra, Josue, Prince, Skyla, and uh, Chukwu. You're going to have to come teach me how to say your name because I don't know how to pronounce it. Number nine, Zane, Sonia, Hector, Duralis, and Wesley. And number 10, Michael, Eric, Joshua, Samira, and Andrew. If I didn't say your name, please let me know. Seth, I'm going to put you on team 10. If I didn't say your name, please let me know. Uh, also, if the internet should kick me off again and that little wheel goes around, I will be back. I promise. So just be patient. All right. We got Miracle. I'm going to put you on... Team 10. And Purple Fanta, what's your real name? I'm not sure if I said it or not. Sometimes it's kind of hard because we're not always by our real name. Uh, and then Kami, I'm going to put you on Team 8 with Miss Barrow's kiddos. Uh, so Purple Fanta, Jezreel, okay. And uh, whose class are you in? Wow, we got 64 kiddos in here. This is a record for Jeopardy. This is exciting. Going to have a huge competition here. All right, guys. So um, we're going to get started here. And these are your main topics. And then um, normally I let you guys choose. But for time's sake today, I'm just going to go through and go kind of in order and choose through them. Um, who's got Jezreel? Whose teachers is Jezreel? Anybody want to claim? Uh, Isba, I did not say your name. Let me know who your teacher is. Jezreel, I'll put you on team. Team seven needs some more players. I'll put you on there. Okay. Isba, let me know uh, who your teacher is. And Larique, uh, let me know who your teacher is. Or I'll just put you on a team. How about that? Uh, Larique is Barrow. Okay, I'll put you on team eight. And Isba, you can be on team seven. All right, guys, we're going to get going. Have your study guide ready to go so you can jot down some of these answers. You also don't have to say the answer in question form. You can put it in just regular, um, you know, uh, sentence form or in um, bullet point form. Some of the questions have two parts. So make sure you're answering both parts because it's going to come down to who tells me both parts first? Okay, here we go. Main causes for 100. What does the M in Maine stand for and how does it lead to World War I? What does the M in Maine stand for and how does it lead to World War I? Hassan, I'll put you on team nine. Destiny, you are on team four. It doesn't really matter until the end anyway, so it's okay if you can't remember what team you're on. Just try your best to answer. Okay, Michael says militarism. That is correct, but what? how does it lead to World War I? Let's see. Yes, you answer here, Anissa. Prince says it, state, it states to build up country's army. Uh, Sonia says they are trying to see who has the best army. Uh, Prince, I think I'm going to go with your answer. That um, it's not like worded really great. Team eight. All right, team eight, 100 points to you. Good job. Building up military, and it leads to World War One because everybody is in competition with who has the biggest military. All right, leaders and heroes for 100. This person was president of the U.S. during World War One. This person was president of the U.S. during World War I.
This person was president of the U.S. during World War I. Woodrow Wilson, very good. Let me know who you are because I didn't write down your your other names. So let me know who you are. What? Oh, hold on. I got like 50 before you. Hold on. Miracle would have been the first one. Miracle, I don't know if that's your name that I've got written down or not. It's weird because like 50 of them come in at the same time. Oh, uh, yep. I got Miracle you. Miracle is on. Team team. Yep. Got you. Thank you, uh, Miss Strickland. All right. So Miracle got that one. Wilson. Good job. Everybody knew it, though. So that's awesome. All right. Warfare and home front for 100. Oh, that one doesn't work. I forgot to fix it. Dang it. We'll go to World War One finally ends for 100. What treaty ended World War One? This one should be pretty easy considering we just went over it. What treaty ends World War One? What treaty ends World War One? Treaty of Versailles. Uh, let's see. Jay Lopez is the first one. He said Versailles. I'll take that. Are you Jose? Or are you? I think you. I think you're Jose. Let me tell me who you are for sure. I should have written down your screen names instead of your actual names. Oh, well. All right. So that one goes to Team 7. All right. Team 7 gets 100. All right. So we're going on to main causes for 200. Remember, if it has two parts, to answer both parts. What does the A in main stand for, and how does it lead to World War I? What does the A in main stand for, and how does it lead to World War I? I got you, Jose. All right. Alliances. If your ally went to war, so did you and so on. Very good. So your average police enthusiast, uh, let me know who you are, what's your real name so I can get it on the right points. But yes, that's right. Uh, it was the domino effect. If your ally went to war, you had to go to war too. Leaders and heroes for 200. Why is General Pershing famous? Why is General Pershing famous? Amori. Okay, I got you. Why is General Pershing famous? He was a great commander and leader. What did he command? Yes, Marlene, good. He led the AEF. That's what we're looking for. He led the AEF. Marlene, I'm not sure if I have you on a team. Let me know if you're on a team or not. I don't see your name. If I don't have you on a team, let me know who your teacher it is. is and I'll put it is Ariana, and she's oh. Miss Barrows. Yes, I've got Ariana. She's on team seven, so team seven gets the points. Thank you, guys, for helping me out with that. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, warfare and home front for 200. Why was trench warfare necessary? Why was trench warfare necessary?
to take cover from the fire the incoming fire that's true but maybe i should have um okay so they needed the cover from the deadly weapons yes that would be good to help avoid tanks, the new weapons. Okay, so the first person that talked about the new weapons was Civ Civlion. Let me know your real name, Civlion, and I'll get you those points because that's true. It's because, oh, no, wait, sorry, Smokey Doki. <laughs> I like that name. He was the one that said uh, new weapons first. So Smokey Doki, you get those points. Remind me of your real name again. Uh, cause I didn't write down schmokey dokey, but I should have, cause that's a fun username. I like it, but yes, because of the new weapons, that's why it was different than what it was before. Okay. Elizabeth, you got it. 200 points for your team. Team number five. Okay. Which one are we on? Uh, we're, World War one, uh, finally ends. I think here we go. Describe one effect on Germany due to the treaty of Versailles. Describe one effect on Germany due to the Treaty of Versailles. Oh, Smokey Doki is Alejandro. Okay. I'm going to put that beside. Oh, they're on the same team, so that worked out. Smokey Doki. Okay, let's see what we got here. A depression. So that's right. Uh, they had to pay for the war, Cameron says. Very good. So Amari, you got that one first. So that's 300 points for your team. Several other really good answers, though, here. Great depression, economic breakdown. They had to pay for the war. Awesome. I can't remember if we did these. Let me look. Yep, we did that one. Did not do this one, though, I don't think. All right, so this should say, which country did France and Great Britain think should pay for the war? Which country did France and Great Britain think should pay for the war? Who were they trying to get to pay for the war? All right, I got to go back up here and see who got it first. Jay Lopez, Germany, very good. And that goes to team six. Yes, they wanted Germany to pay for the war. And they, in fact, did have to pay for the war. All right, we're going to go back this way. Warfare and home front for 300. Name three new World War I weapons. Name three new World War I weapons. Name three new World War One weapons. All right, let's see. Miracle said machine guns, tanks, but you miss, we're missing the third one. Wesley beat you out with the third one. He said flamethrower, machine gun, and tanks. So Wesley gets those points. Wesley, you're on team nine. 300 points for you guys. Good job, team nine. All right. Moving on to leaders and heroes for 300. Why is Sor Sergeant Alvin York famous? Why is Sergeant Alvin York famous? What makes him different from the other people that were fighting in World War I? Think about the day that we talked about him. That was when we talked about the AEF. Yes, he did kill and capture Germans. There were 20 soldiers that were killed. He's named after New York. <laughs> no, keep thinking. What was different about him versus everybody else? Think about before he went overseas, what happened?
He did receive the Medal of Honor, but a lot of people did. He was a sergeant, but there were other sergeants. He was religious. Okay, Miracle, how does his religion affect what happened? He didn't believe in killing. Very good. So remember, he doesn't even want to be in the army. And he tries to argue that he shouldn't have to be. But they force him to go in. And because he's so skilled with rifles, he's able to trick the Germans into thinking that there are actually more Americans than what there actually were. And he's able to help win that battle. So very good. There is an old movie Mr. Boyer was telling us about. It's called Sergeant York. If you're interested, it's like a black and white movie. I think it might be on Netflix or um, uh, one of those, you know, Prime. Miracle, what team are you on? I can't find your name right now. Nine. Nine, that's right. I think she's in as another name. Okay, so that is three. Was that 300? Yep, that was a 300. Okay. 300, so that's 600 to you guys. All right, main causes for 300. What does the I in main stand for? And how does it lead to World War I? What does the I in main stand for? And how does it lead to World War I? Imperialism, yes. How does it lead to World War I? Germany wanted to get new land. Countries wanted more land, yes. And resources, right? Gain territory, you get more resources. So I'm going to go with Jose on that one. And that is team number six. 300 points goes to you guys. And we are down to the top dogs here. So teams one through four, we need to get you some points. Teams five, 700. Team six, you have 600. Team seven, you have 200. Team eight, you have 100. Team nine, 600. And team 10, 100. Here we go with the big boys. Main causes for 400. What does the N in main stand for? And how does it lead to World War I? What does the N in main stand for? And how does it lead to World War I? I gave those ones to uh, Josue. Hey, Seuss. I, but um, you guys are on the, or Jose, but you guys are on the same team, so it doesn't matter. Nationalism thought your country was the best and no other country was better. All right, very good. You are on team five, so 400 for you guys. Pride in your country, wanting to win for your country, all that goes with nationalism. Leaders and heroes for 400. Who are the AEF and why are they important? Who are the AEF and why are they important? Who are the AF and why are they important? American Expeditionary Forces, that's true. Why are they important? Make sure and get that last part in there. I like that miracle. American X something. <laughs> that's great. Jose said they were the US Army men who brand new in war and helped motivate the other people in war that were sad. Okay, yeah, you could say that they did that. What's different about them versus the other parts of the army? They launched the first major offensive in Europe, American Expeditionary Forces. SBR, let me know who you are. 
Uh, let's see. Amori says they supported British and French forces as well as operating in their own manner. They supported British and French forces. Yes. Okay, that's good. And don't forget, they were Americans. America wasn't in the war yet. So um, they were, you know, supporting, even though our country wasn't like technically in the war yet, they were foreign soldiers helping uh, defend other armies. All right, Samira, I'm going to give those points to you guys. You guys are team 10. So that's an important thing to remember about them, that they were foreigners helping uh, the other armies. All right. Warfare and home front for 400. What were Liberty bonds used for during the war? What were Liberty bonds used for during the war? Annie, it's okay. I know we're going fast, but if you... Um, Want to come back and watch it to get your answers later? You can, or you can just, you know, do your best on the ones that you know. Uh, support the Allied cause in the war. Very good, Amori. Uh, they are to support the cause of the war. So basically, it's money that is going towards the war. When you buy a Liberty Bond, you are supporting the war. All right, World War I ends for 400. Define self-determination and how it affected the world after World War I. Define self-determination and how it affected the world after World War I. So what is self-determination? And then give me an example of how that played out. All right. SBR says, after the war, there was a new commitment to self-determination. That's true, but what is self-determination? And give me a example of it. We talked about this today in the notes. Look at your notes from today and see if you can remember. Uh, they, let's see, they can, can seek to create its own independent government or state, okay? The belief that they should rule themselves, both of those are right. Now give me an example of how that played out. Are you guys on the same team? No, you guys are not on the same team. First one that adds the example gets the points. Yep, you're right, Eric. Countries should rule themselves. What's an example of how this played out? I'm going to give you about 30 more seconds. Hmm, Bolsheviks? No, I don't think that would count. Well... No, I don't think that would be self-determination. When the map is changed, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely a part of it. But why is the map changed? How is it changed? Can you tell me one way it's changed and how it relates to self-determination? You're right. Uh, self-determination means when a nation believes it can rule itself. Europeans were an example. Which Europeans? Jose said, an example is Austria-Hungary and how they split and how there's Austria and Hungary. Okay, that was a little bit more because they wanted to keep them from being big and powerful. But there were other parts of the Austria-Hungary empire that also are going to split off. 
So Jose, you're closest. I'm going to give you some of those points and I'll give the girls that answered first some of the points too. Uh, another example would be the Ottoman Empire. Remember last year in world history when you talked about how the Ottoman Empire split up into uh, different ethnic groups and we had countries like Greece uh, get independence. That's another example of that. All right. I think we answered that one. All right. We're down to the 500s. Here we go for all the marbles. World War I finally ends. Describe American disillusionment after World War I and why Americans felt that way. Describe American disillusionment after World War I and why Americans felt that way. Feeling a disappointment because of economic problems. Very good. Uh, that would be definitely one reason, Amori. And not only just the feeling of disappointment, but thinking that it was going to get better and then it didn't. Right? The Great Depression is another reason. Good job, Wesley. All right. Warfare on the home front or and the home front. How did life change for women and African Americans due to World War I? How did life change for women and African Americans due to World War I? Give me one example. Yes, the beginning of getting more rights. Very good. Let's see, 1,500. I'll give you guys a point update in just a second. Getting more rights. Uh, women are granted the right to vote. More jobs would be another one that you want to put down on your study guide. All three of those. Leaders and heroes for 500. Why was the victory of the Battle of Argonne so important? Why was the victory of the Battle of Argonne so important. Think about the impact of this battle. What was the impact? It was the deadliest. So how does that, how was that impactful? It was the last. Why was it the last? What happened to make it the last? German lost troops. Yes, so the Germans lost a lot of troops. They also lost a lot of weapons, and that was another reason. So good job, Wesley. I'll give you guys those points. Uh, you are on T9. Started World War One. Describe the spark that started World War One and why it started World War One. What was the spark and why did it start it? So think about what we talked about on the day that we talked about the main causes. What is the thing that ignites all of these main causes? Uh, not the sinking of the Lusitania. That's what would, that does something else. The letter, Zimmerman letter, that does something else too. The spark is Franz Ferdinand's death. Very good, Jose. Why does it start the war? Yes, assassination of Ferdinand. Why does that start the war? Okay. So if it was just the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, 
Why is that important? How does that play a role with all the main causes? I'll give you about 30 more seconds. Okay, good, Jose, because one country blames another and then we goes into alliances and all this other uh, all the other problems because of the main the main causes. Yeah, so it kind of all works together. So when Archduke Franz Ferdinand is assassinated, that upsets Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary has allies. Those allies come in. Serbia has allies. Those allies come in and it just starts this whole mess. Good job. All right, 500 for you guys. Okay, so grand totals. Team five, you have 2,200. Team six, you have 2,000. Team seven, 200. Team eight, 100. Team nine, 1,400. And team 10, 500. Now, don't fret. If, even if you only have 200 points, you still have a chance of winning because we have Final Jeopardy. So for Final Jeopardy, what you're going to do you are going to communicate with your teachers on Teams through the direct message because you don't want other people to see your answers or your information on the chat, okay? So what you're going to do is um, you, when I ask you the question, well, first, before I ask you the question, you have to wager how many points you want to wager. So you, ha you can't go over the points that you have, but you can wager all of the points that you have. So let's say you have 2,200 points. You can wager all of those points if you want to. But you don't have to. You can wager 1,000. Whatever you wager, as long as you get the answer correct, then you get those points added to your score. So technically, let's say the team that's winning right now is Team 5. They have 2,200 points. If they wager at all and they don't get the answer right, then they go to back down to zero. Okay, so you can still win even if you only have 100 points. What I want you to do right now is to let your teacher know how much you'd like to wager. So if you are on team five, that would be Alejandro, Elizabeth, Amori, Bryce, Jennifer, or Anna Juan. Anna, I'm sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong, I think. Anyways, that's team five. You guys have 2,200 points. You're going to communicate, I think, uh, with Mr. Boyer. Let him know how many points you want to wager. And if you guys don't agree, then he'll just kind of average them together. Team six is Annie, Ferran, Ferran me, uh, jo, uh, Jose, Anaya, Sabrina, Emma, and Jesus. You guys have 2,000 points. Let Mr. Boyer know how much that you want to wager. Um, Ariana, Daisy, Rizwan, Cameron, Brian, Jennifer, Jezreel, and Ispa. You guys have 200 points. Let Miss Barrow know how much you want to wager. Israel, Sandra, Josue, Prince, Skyla, uh, Chukwu, Kami, or Kami, and Larique. Uh, you guys have 100 points. Let Miss Barrow know. Team 9, Miracle, Hassan, Zane, Sonia, Hector, Duralis, and Wesley. You guys have 1,400 points. Let Miss Strickland know. Michael, Eric, Joshua, Samira, Andrew, Seth, and, and uh, okay, yeah, and Seth. You guys have 500 points. So let Miss Strickland know how much you want to wager. Miss Barrow, you have two teams, Team 7 and Team 8. When you guys communicate with them what you want to wager, let them know what team you're on. Okay? That way it's easier for them. So just let them know your wager. As soon as we have the wagers in, then I will show you the question. And we will do the final Jeopardy. Please include your team number when you're sending us your wagers and your answers. Yes, give them your team number, guys. That way they know who who you're playing for. And while you're waiting, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up because you've had so much fun. It really helps out the channel a lot to do that. And there are 50 of you all here. That's amazing. That's the most I've ever had for Jeopardy. So cool. So give it, give it a thumbs up because you just had so much fun today.
Thank you. I appreciate that. Elizabeth, you're the best. All right. As soon as we get the wagers in, we'll go ahead and ask you your final Jeopardy question. Now, the final Jeopardy question, you're also going to send in direct message to your teacher. Don't put the answer in the chat because you don't want all the other teams to see it. So send it to your teacher. Let them know what team you're on when you send it. Miss Quez, I'm trying. My teams is so slow right now. No problem. We got I've time. got wagers from both teams, so we're ready. Okay. All right. While you're waiting, you could also make sure that you can access your notes. And you might want to check out you know, specific things about the U.S. involvement of World War I that might help you answer this question. Ms. Quez, I'm just going to text you. Do you have your phone with you? Yeah, yeah, you can text me. That's fine. Okay. Ms. Strickland, are you ready? Almost. Okay. Texting you as well. Sounds good. All right. All right. I texted you. Got it. You guys, you're good. All right. And good. All right, guys, here we go. Here's your question. Explain two reasons the U.S. joined World War I. Explain two reasons the U.S. joined World War I. Remember, you're sending it to your teacher. Don't put it in the chat. Explain two reasons the U.S. joined World War I. The team's chat. That the United States joined. I'm going to give you one more time. All right. Okay, awesome. Do you guys have answers from everybody? Oh, the anticipation. Is it killing you guys? Is it killing you guys not knowing who wins? <laughs> I'm not feeling a whole lot of Ken Jennings here right now. <laughs> okay. In, in, case, in case we... The kids don't know. Ken Jennings is the all-time leader in Jeopardy winnings. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's rumored so, to be the next host. <laughs> oh, re oh, yeah, that's right. He is. That's right. Okay. We got a lot of crickets going on. You guys might lose your wagers. Make sure that you answer. Got about 30 more seconds.
Mr. Boyer, how much did Team 5 wager? They wagered 1,000. Team 6 wagered 500. Okay. Very conservative. Yes. It's probably a good thing, considering what you're saying. Did either one of them have the correct answer? I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. They sent me answers. I'm trying to figure out who was Team 6. Team That's, 5 did get the correct answer. Okay. Team 6 is Annie, Ferrami, uh, Jose, Anaya, Sabrina, Emma, and Jesus. Okay, so yes, uh, they, they also were correct. Okay. <clears throat> Still no answers for you, Miss Barrow? Nope, none. Okay. Team seven and eight, you guys are out of there. You wagered all and you lost all. Sorry, team seven and eight. And what about nine and 10? Whenever you get them ready, Miss Strickland, just let us know if they get their points or not. Yeah, they're good to go. They got it. Okay. All right. All right. So grand total, it came down to teams five and six and nine and 10. Team six, you ended with 500 points. You had two, oh, I'm sorry, you ended with, never mind. I was looking at the wrong calculation. <laughs> I got to start with uh, number 10. Team 10, you had 500 points. You wagered 300, so you ended with 800 points. You're in fourth place. Good job. Team six, you are in third place with 2,500 points. Team nine, they took a big risk and wagered all 1,400 points. So they ended up with 2,800 points. And in second place and first place is team five with 3,200 points. Good job, team five. That's Alejandro, Elizabeth, Amori, Bryce, Jennifer, and Anna John. I think I'm saying his name wrong. Is it or her name? So sorry. Um, I'll have to learn those names a little bit better next time. All right, guys. So congratulations. Good job to team five. You guys are the all-time champions. And out of 10 teams, that's saying something. That's pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed today. Um, make sure I'll that give her a thumbs up and the thing. Yes, make sure to give a thumbs up and before you head out of here. And also make sure and study, 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 study. We want you guys to do really well on this test. Your test is Friday. Make some flashcards, make a Quizlet, do whatever you got to do to get these answers into your heads. Thank you so much. Great job, everybody. Thanks for joining. And uh, we will see you on Friday. Anybody want to say goodbye? Mr. Barrow or Mr. Poyer is out. All right. See you I was guys. I say show Bye. them the four reasons, but okay. <laughs> oh, show oh, yeah, I got to show them. Okay. I can do that. Good, good idea, Ms. Strickland. I forgot. Here's your four there answers. Go. So you've got the Zimmerman telegram. This is one of the reasons that the U.S. joined the war because um, the Zimmerman telegram, remember, that's where the Germans were trying to get Mexico to fight the U.S. We had the sinking of the Lusitania, which upset the U.S. because it was a passenger ship. Wilson wants to make the world safe for democracy and freedom of the seas. So there's some answers for your study guide if you still need them. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Had a great time. See you on Friday.